one that's, that's gone to be with the Lord? Has everybody got a loved one that's with the Lord right now? None of these things are going on <laughs> where they're at. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's beautiful. There's trees, there's streams, there's all kinds of things going on. It's life abundant and free, but there's no effect of the fall. There's no effect of the enemy in the kingdom of God. And, and, and the Lord says, that kingdom is coming, and we're going to liberate the earth. It's not like we're so much taking over the earth through the spirit of the Lord, but it's a liberation of the earth. It's like the Lord saying, hey, people, if, it doesn't matter how you're bound. I offer you freedom. I offer you a whole new way of life. So praise the Lord. So look at uh, Romans 12, 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourself. How many feel like from time to time you need to avenge yourself? You don't have to avenge yourself. I mean, there's a time. I, I don't think we have to be punks. And I, Just because you're a believer, you don't have to let people push you around. But then there's a place where you don't avenge yourself. You just leave it up to the Lord. Uh, like, what are you going to do? Uh, like in Nice, there was uh, 84 people killed, uh, over 200 people wounded. And so you have this guy who just takes his truck, and it was their 4th of July. It was their liberation day. And so this guy just, in the name of Allah, in the name of God, in the name of Allah, who is not God, he's an antichrist spirit, he drives this truck and weaving and trying to kill as many people as he can. That's not the spirit of the Lord. Uh, and the Lord is, is, is going to avenge where these wrongs are taking place. But he doesn't want you to avenge yourself. Beloved, do not avenge yourself. I mean, what are you going to do if one of those people... Uh, there were several people from the United States there. If that was your daughter or granddaughter, how are you going to avenge something when they're laying on the ground dead? You can't avenge it. You just have to turn it over to the Lord. Lord, I don't know what to do. But I'll tell you this. What you need to know is God doesn't want that to happen to you. And he wants you to know that you have a hedge of protection around you, but it's in the Lord. Do you know you're divinely protected in the Lord? Because there's things that that would happen to you, but the Lord says, I wouldn't have it. Amen? you got to have faith to believe that the Lord is going to protect you and put a hedge about you. Uh, the, the Bible says this, people perish for lack of knowledge. But you need to know you're protected by God Almighty. Amen? Do you know that? Amen. But rather give place, let, let the Lord have it. For it is written, vengeance is mine. And really that word vengeance is justice. Justice is mine. Justice is mine, saith the Lord. Have you ever just had to turn something over to the Lord? There's really nothing you could do about it, so you just turn it over to him? You know, back uh, years ago, uh, I got asked to preach at this church. It was about 1992 uh, or three, And uh, there was a guy from the Methodist church called me and said, do you want this church? And I said, yeah, I'd like to have that church. That'd be fine. He said, well, drive to Bloomington, you can have that church. I'll talk to you, and we'll assign it to you. And I said, fine. So I drive up there, drive to Bloomington. He goes up there, and he goes, you know, there was a guy from Mitchell that uh, just gave me a long, uh, a long phone call, and he said that you prayed in the spirit, that you, you prayed in tongues. And he said, you know, is that true? And I said, yeah, I do pray in the spirit. And he goes, well, he said, you know, he said, uh, that guy went out of his way to tell me, I think we should reconsider this appointment. He said, you go home, pray about it, I'll pray about it. And you know, I was so mad when I got home, I thought, you know, uh, is that going to disqualify me from ministering? And so, uh, so I went home and I called him and I said, hey, forget about that appointment. Uh, I don't want that appointment. But you know, that guy that called up there, was a, he, was a, he was a minister. And he was just out, and, and for years... He would come into the restaurant, and he would just torment me. And finally, one day, I just turned him over to the Lord. I said, Lord, let that guy, get, get him off my back. I, I don't want, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with him. I'm not going to converse with him. He would come, and he would walk in the back door. He would walk in the back door of the restaurant, and I'd just, I'd be back there working. He, there he'd be. And, uh, you know, one day, Kathy's dad wasn't doing well. And I saw an ambulance go by. This was like six years later after I turned him over to the Lord. I don't, have any, I don't have any wrath towards that guy. I didn't have any anger towards that guy. 
I didn't want anything bad to happen to him. But I saw an ambulance go by, and Kathy's dad was not doing good, so I drove out. I followed down the ambulance until I got to where her mom and dad lived, where it turned off at Highway 60. And I pulled in there, and the ambulance went right on down the road. And, uh, and so I pulled in there to turn around, and, and I said, well, it wasn't her dad, so praise the Lord. And the Lord spoke to me like that, and he told me, he said, that was that guy. He said, that's the guy that's been tormenting you. And he said, he's not alive anymore. And I didn't, take any, I didn't rejoice in it. I didn't celebrate in it. I turned around, went back to work, but it wasn't a, but about 10, 15 minutes. Th their family called me and said, hey, this guy's had a terrible accident. Can you come out here uh, and pray with the family? And I did go pray with the family. But that guy went out of his way for six years to do everything he could do to make my life miserable. The kingdom of God's coming to the earth. <laughs> you know, that's what, and I'm just saying, what, wake up. Don't, don't fight against what the Lord wants to bring into the the Lord loves people. The Lord doesn't want anybody to perish. But you know, there's people all over the globe. There's, a, there's people who are fighting against people knowing that Jesus has risen from the dead and that he's Lord. And the Lord wants everybody to be saved. But the Lord says, don't take it upon yourself to pay back people who are trying to do you wrong. Turn it over to me. Let me, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So not only will the Lord take Justice. He'll make justice. He doesn't want anybody to die. He wants everybody to be saved. I honestly believe that guy went to heaven. I do. He was a Christian. But I believe that the Lord will, the Lord will deal with the people who, who are trying to destroy you. But he loves people. But then he says, I will repay. And, and that word means this. I will open your throat. You, how many know the Lord will restore to you sevenfold? what the enemy has stolen. Amen? He'll do that. So anything that you have, anything that has been stolen illegally from you by Satan, the Lord says, if you can find the thief out, if you recognize it's not flesh and blood, but it's, it's the spirit that has stolen that from you. So if you've ever had an inheritance stolen, if you've ever had anything stolen from you personally, you can call that back, but you can call it back sevenfold. Amen? You can say, Lord, that's mine, and, and I call it back. So he'll repay you that way, but not only that, but he will open up your mouth to whereby you can say things that you couldn't say before. Has anybody ever uh, come to a place where you can begin to say things that you could not say before? And you can begin, say, I'm a child of God. Say, I'm the righteousness of God. In Christ. See, I almost couldn't even say that when I first started reading that scripture because I, I didn't feel righteous. And I was trying to, to say, well, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. But it's his righteousness, not my righteousness. And when your tongue gets loose and you start saying what God says, God says, I'll perform my word. Amen? Amen? He will do it. Well, we're in a time where the Lord says, look, this thing's not always going to continue. Not, we're not always going to have Muslims trying to kill Christians and trying to kill Jews. We are going to come to a place whereby I'm going to ship that. How many, how many people on the earth are, are Muslim? Do you know? There's over a billion. There's over a billion Muslims. God loves those people, but he wants their eyes open, whereby they're not trying to kill people, but now their eyes are open, and they can see that Jesus has risen from the dead, and they're saying, I don't have to live a life of hatred. I can live a life where I can love people and be blessed by people, and I can bless people. Amen? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise so anyway, uh, look at Romans 13, 1 and 2. Let every soul, now look, one of the things that God is, is a God of order. Have you ever submitted yourself to the Lord? It's the easiest thing in the world to do. I mean, we've got two people getting baptized today. The easiest thing you can do is to walk with the Lord and say, Lord, you're boss. <laughs> you're my boss. How many, how many remember when you used to run your own show? You remember when you used to do everything you wanted to do no matter what? No matter what it was, you were just running around and whatever you wanted to do, you did do? and you didn't consult with the Lord, you didn't ask the Lord, should I do this, should I not do this, you just did whatever you want. And whatever thought came into it, if it had anything to do with pleasure, it had anything to do with the, the uh, pandering to the flesh, you went and did it. Does anybody remember that day? No, a bunch of good people here. Well, I remember that day. But when you come to the Lord, then you start saying, you know, Lord, what should I do here? How, you know, what do you want me to do? Because I don't know what to do. You know, uh, 
Let every soul be subject to governing authorities. Everything in the kingdom of God, everything in the third heaven right now is in perfect, absolute order. And there's peace. And the lion is laying down with the lamb right now. And he said, I'm going to bring that down here where everybody's under the authority of the Lord and there's no spirit of rebellion working. Amen? How many came out of a divorced home? When you come out of a divorced home, you, you know what it's like when there's contention going on. The Lord said it this way, and then there's contention going on, and it's, and it's a mess. It's total chaos. Where there's no ex authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. When I talk about the kingdom of God manifesting on the earth, when you look at the cities and you see, what do you see? Like at Dallas. When you see Dallas, where a guy just shoots five policemen, what is that? I'm going to tell you, that's, that's the spirit of the devil. Now, you can, you can say black, white, you can say whatever. It's not black and white. It's Christ, antichrist. It's not black and white. It's Christ, antichrist. You know, I serve, I serve under a guy in Chicago. I mean, he, he's black. I, I sat under his ministry. And he, he would say this. I'm a black man from Alabama, and I have no limits. <laughs> and he flies every month to a different part of the globe in his own jet. And he said, at some point, you've got you to forget what happened to you, and you've got to say, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I'm not, I'm not going to take it upon myself to try to kill somebody that I think is wrong. Listen, the enemy's behind all that stuff, but I want to tell you, you're liberated. You're free. You don't, have, you don't have to fight that battle. The Lord's already fought, the, fought that battle for you, and you are free. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. praise the Lord. Did I have one more verse, brother? Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God. If you work somewhere, you've got a boss, I assume. <laughs> Wherever you work, Submit to that boss. Some, some bosses are harder to submit to than others. True? Right? But the Lord doesn't ask you, are they hard to submit to? He says, submit to whoever you work for. I'm in the marketplace. I've always been in the marketplace. I can tell you this. If you're in, private, if you're in the private sector, you have to make a profit. I mean, we're not like the post office that can lose $8 billion a year and keep printing money. We, if, you're in the, if you're in the private sector, you have to make money or you don't exist, okay? And if you're in the private sector and you've got people that work for you, you there has to be order. There doesn't have to be order, but if you want to be profitable, there has to be order. And people have to recognize authority. And, you know, I, I've been in the workplace for... 40 years, but the thing is, that I can put up with a thousand mistakes from somebody, but I put up with, I have zero tolerance on rebellion. Because if you, if you allow rebellion to come up, a house divided against itself, what? And so the, but, but it's from the Lord. It's from the Lord. There, therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. It, the thing is, the Lord puts people in authority. Do you know that? It says, uh, be ye not many teachers, even in the Word of God. Be ye not many teachers, even in the kingdom of God. But, but for me, to be in the marketplace or to be in the kingdom of God, it's one thing. But be ye not many teachers, knowing you shall receive what? The stricter judgment. God holds you. If you're going to move into a place of authority, God says, you have a stricter judgment on you than other people. Amen? If you teach the gospel, you have a stricter judgment on you than other people. But the Lord says, but I want everything in order because if you get in order, I'm going to tell you this, if you can get a house in order, you're going to have a profitable house. If you can get a business that is not uh, riddled with rebellion, you're going to have one prosperous business. <laughs> Amen? I mean, see, I, I'll... I'll, I'll address somebody 
that, that rolls their eyes at me more than I, than I would if they, if they did something that was people would deem a thousand times more uh, offensive than that. But if somebody rolls their eyes at you, I, see, I'll call that every time. Did you roll your eyes at me? No, I didn't roll my eyes at you. Well, are you, you having some kind of situation going on because, you, you know, your eyes are rolling in the back of your head. Is that a demon manifesting or, is it, or did you really roll your eyes at me? But see, you've got to call that stuff out because that's a spirit on that person, even if they don't know it. That's a spirit on that person, and the Lord holds us accountable. When I was in Chicago about three weeks ago, I was supposed to stay through noon on Friday. The Lord told me Thursday night about 6 o'clock, go home, you got a situation going on. I didn't know there was a situation going on. I come home, there's a situation going on. <laughs> and he told me this on the way home. I'm going to hold you responsible for how you handle this situation. However, however, you, I, I'm holding you responsible. This is under your authority. You, I'm holding you responsible to how you, how you handle this situation. I'm going to tell you, dads, parents, the Lord holds you responsible for how you, how you bring your kids up. You say, well, you know, I love my kids so much I don't discipline. I let a lot of things slide. Don't ever love anybody more than you love God. I love my kids too, but I love God more. And if you ever love your kid more than you love God, that kid has become an idol to you. And, and, and what it's doing, it's usurping authority. Okay? You stand with me? And the, and the thing with most people is, you know, I, we're getting ready to sell one of our rental houses. And we had, what, about a five-day gap where we weren't going to have insurance on that piece of property. The annual thing's coming up. So I went and talked to my insurance lady and, and uh, so we got it all worked out. We just paid one month of insurance rather than a quarter. And so I, you know, I, I paid for it. And, and she goes, well, it's just like I always tell everybody. You're covered unless you have a loss. And so, oh, come on, people. <laughs> I said, well, you ought to put that on the outside of your building. Well, you're covered unless you have a loss, you know. And she was kidding. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's the way it is with most people that's under authority. Most people that are under authority say, I don't have a tr trouble with authority. But when you s try to correct them or you rebuke them, then you find out if they have authority. Nobody has a problem with authority unless they get corrected, right? Because, because the correction comes from above, and everybody's happy-go-lucky. Everybody's praise the Lord, hallelujah. But then when you correct them, then you're going to find out if there's a spirit involved. Because if, if, you got, if you've got a rebellious spirit, if you've got something that, I don't, you know, nobody's going to tell me what to do, well, then you're the, you're, the, you're the top of the totem pole. You're the chief, you know. But, but God sets people in order. Do you, do you think everybody that's, I can remember when I, I was a supervisor at, at Carpenters. And I, you know, I've often asked the Lord, Lord, what, how do I get into these things? Fixes because he opens doors and you just walk through them. You pray about it, you walk through them. So as a as a 24 year old, I'm I'm supervising people over twice my age. But I can remember this one guy, and uh, I was walking out to uh, to my car one night, and, and they everybody in my department were they were all welders. And this guy was left handed, and it was. And it was like, I, I was after, it was probably 45 minutes after the shift was over. And he's out there, and he's got that welding hammer, and he had, he had an arm. If I could take my shirt off, I would show you how big my muscles are. But he had, but it wouldn't be appropriate, so I'm not going to do it. But he had, I mean, he, he had like a big old rock, just like, like that. He was left-handed, and his right arm wasn't that big. But, but he had that welding thing. He had that welding hammer there, and I'm walking to my car, and, and I could see him out there, and he come up to me and goes, I'm thinking about just beating your head in with this hammer. And I said, well, I would say this, you know, if you're going to do it, and now he could have done it. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. But the Lord puts a hedge about you. And I said, but I'll say this, you know, if, if you don't do it, and if I tell people, if I tell my authority, you're doing this right here in the parking lot, I said, you won't have a job tomorrow. So think about it. And he threw that hammer down. He said, you know, you, 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 
okay, you've got too much work on me. Nobody on earth could do the job that you've got me doing, which, you know, I didn't really define what he did. Most jobs are defined. You threw that hammer down and walked off. The hammer's laying there. You're like, I never said anything to anybody. I'm just saying, it's not always easy to be in a place of authority. But if God raises you to a place, of, it's like he told me in Chicago, go home, you're going you're gonna to be judged by how you, you're, I'm going I'm to evaluate you. I'm going to hold you accountable how you, what you do in this situation. If you stand in your place, or if you if you retreat from it. But the thing is, God wants us to submit to the authority because the original rebel is Satan. And he loves to create chaos. And look at what he's done on the earth. But God said the kingdom is back. The kingdom of God is back. And I'm a king of kings. Jesus said, I'm the king of kings. And he said, and you are kings and priests in my kingdom. You're the kings. I'm the king of kings. And if you believe in me, you're the king. I'm the king of kings, and you're the king. Say, I'm a king. I'm a king. You are a king in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? But if you can get... How many played on a sports team in high school? Did you have a good team atmosphere, team spirit? Were you successful? Yeah. You'll be successful. If you can get anybody going without rebellion, I'm going to tell you, there's no limit. There's no limit. If you and your husbands, if you and your wives can come together on finances, there's no limit. We have no limitation. If you can come together on your goals, there's no limitation. If you guys can come together, I'm just saying, any business, if you can, if you can pray, I pray over my business. It's Father, in the name of Jesus, angels of the living God, surround my businesses. Put a firewall around them in Jesus' name. Let no rebellion intrude. Let no rebellion come inside that firewall. And Father, in the name of Jesus, if there's any rebellion, angels of God, stay around and camp around these businesses until all rebellion leaves in Jesus' name. Now, I want to tell you this. Sometimes you'll lose people. You'll go, my God, I don't want to lose that person. But if you pray that prayer, sometimes the Lord will say, you got to go. The angels of God are saying, you got to go. Amen? So I'm just saying, people. But look at uh, Psalm 133. Is this thing real or is this some kind of game? It's real. Is God serious? How serious is God? How many's got children? I'll tell you this. Oh, Josh is my best friend. I wouldn't, I wouldn't sacrifice him for any man. This is how serious God is about you, about your future, about your destiny. He sacrifices only begotten son to take away your sin, to take away your curses, to take away your poverty take away your nervousness, to take away your fear, to take away your depression. But he's, but he's raised him from the dead. And he said, now I declare you are victorious. That's how serious God is. It's no game to it. Amen? This is real stuff. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad it's real? Aren't you glad this is not Santa Claus stuff? Aren't you glad you're not chasing the Easter bunny around the yard trying to find some stupid egg? Aren't you glad Jesus has risen from the dead and we're empowered with the resurrected spirit of God Almighty? Amen? Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head running down the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon defending, descending upon the mountains of Zion. And there, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, life evermore. See, if you can get lined up with God, and he said, Lord, I don't know what you got for me in this life. I don't know what you're going to do. Well, but God says, wherever I put you, I expect you to be a good steward of where I put you. I expect you to be excellent where I put I don't expect you to duck from, from the challenges from underneath. I expect you to stand in your place in Jesus' name. And when you're reading that scripture, Darren, go back to that first verse. This is the Lord when he got back... Uh, to the, after he died, after he took away our sins, I'm talking about in this 133, Darren. 
Uh, so he dies, he takes away our sin. He became our sin. He became our sin. It wasn't like God said, okay, you're, you know, I forgive everybody's sins. He forgave everybody's sins, but the only reason he forgave everybody's sins is because Jesus became your sin. It wasn't like he said, I just forget about it. Oh, don't worry about it. No, he made Jesus become every sin. Wow. I mean, my gosh, just the, just the, the, the sheer volume of sins I've committed in my life would have weighed him down. Can you think about every person that's ever lived all coming upon the Lamb of God in a moment of time? Woo, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He, but he died for him, and he's risen up. And when he gets back to the throne of God, in his physical body, he sits down on the throne of God as a man, as our brother, as our Savior. He sits down on the throne of God, and the Father takes the oil of the Holy Ghost and pours it down over his head. And it runs down his beard, and it's running down his body, and you are his body. And if you line up, you've got the same oil. You've got the same anointing rolling down on you that is on our Savior right now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing that's impossible to you. Amen? Say praise the Lord. <laughs> I hate rebellious demons. They are so, they are such liars. They are so trying to keep the glory from the Lord, but every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. But God's kingdom is manifesting, and that's why you're seeing all this stuff going on. You, you saw Turkey, you know, uh, trying to have an overthrow. You see the thing going on in Nice. You see, you see uh, the Muslims, they're an antichrist, they're an antichrist spirit spirit they're an antichrist group and they're saying we're out to destroy the jews and we're out to destroy the christians but god but jesus was a jew and now he's risen from the dead the jews rejected him he said gentiles i'll make you my body if you just confess me as lord so now we are the body of christ amen, amen. the blessing of abraham has come upon us as gentiles through the resurrected spirit of jesus amen so not only do we have a right to be sons of God, we have a right to be wealthy. Amen? Amen. Do you want to be wealthy? Yes. Who, who didn't say yes? <laughs> Come over here, I'll lay hands on you. I'll get that poverty devil off of you in Jesus' name. Who wants to be wealthy? Yes. Amen? Yes. God wants you to be wealthy. First and foremost, God wants you to be wealthy. Amen? He doesn't want finances to be a concern to you. I know people with a lot of wealth, and, they, and they're misers. They worry about their money all the time. God said, I don't want you to worry about anything. He said, my flow of wealth is never going to stop. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.